Hey there, welcome back. Alex Lyon here, and we are going to look at the attributes that define a team. And we're working out of BB and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. So in this chapter one, they are looking at the similarities and differences between groups and teams. And the team has a distinct meaning compared to a group. Yes, they overlap, obviously. Groups and teams have a lot of things in common to some extent. But teams, there are, they're a little more specific, and we're going to define that more explicitly. Explicitly, There are four parts to this definition. First of all, teams develop clear, well-defined goals. So they really know what they're there to do together. For example, a sports team knows what their purpose is when they show up, and they have a very clearly defined goal. It's a team. So a group may show up. A group might just be social they might be just hanging out and they're not trying to accomplish anything uh, in particular. They're just there to socialize and hang out. Number two, teams develop clearly defined roles, duties, and responsibilities. Once more, on a sports team, you have a position to play. You have really clearly defined responsibilities that you have to perform in that position. But let's say you're just hanging out with a group of friends and throwing the ball around. You're still, it still looks like you're playing sports, but you're just a group of friends hanging out. That's different than a team that has very clearly defined roles. Number three, teams have clearly defined rules and expectations. So there, there's much more of a, a clear structure and it's a little bit more regimented in that way. For example, I used to be in a band and we had things like, you have to be at rehearsal at a certain time and don't be late. And the rehearsal goes until a certain time and don't be late. And also don't bring any friends to the band's rehearsal. Just come with yourself so we don't have to debate our friends about what songs we should be playing. Clear rules, clear expectations. Because a group, a musical, we call them a musical group, but really it's a team of people and it's ideal working very tightly together. And number four, teams are coordinated and collaborative. Uh, once again, if you're just hanging out playing some casual sports with some friends, you don't necessarily need to coordinate your activities very tightly or collaborate and make decisions together. Uh, but you do when you're on an actual sports team. You do have to do those things if you're in an actual band. You're writing songs together. You're singing harmony together. You're making decisions in rehearsal and even maybe when you're performing, that requires a lot of coordination and collaboration. So there's a lot of overlap, certainly, between groups and teams. But if you keep in mind these examples and these four rules, you'll see that teams have a little bit clearer structure, rules, responsibilities, and clearly defined roles like that. So there's a little bit about the difference in similarity. Question of the day, what do you see as some of the other differences that we haven't mentioned? When you have been on a team or in different kinds of groups, where do you see the line crossing over from turning into a, a group, turning into a team? I would love to hear your comments in that section below the video. Take care.